the Around the NFL podcast. Feels like the game is slowing down for them. <laughs> From the Chris Wessling podcast studio, it's Around the NFL. I'm Dan Hansis. Heroes with me, Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler. It is time to do the dive that we do. Week five preview show is upon us. Man, it does fly. It really does. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> you, you were always but I feel that like guy. It, it was just, it was just the summer, and now here we are, heading into mid-October almost, and the season is almost at the quarter pole. Oh, those quarter poles actually three quarters. Shut up. I mean it as one fourth through. We're almost there. Well, we're kind of past it, right? Through four games, everyone finished their four games. In, in but now the, it's 17. You're right. So midway through this week, yes. it would be right now then we as, as we speak. Uh, I, I feel bad, though, for our listeners because for so long we've teased them the Theology Podcast as a potential upcoming show. And before the show, I got to say, we had a great Theology Podcast going, but no one was recording. And they'll well, never we hear did. It. I mean, was, I thought it, I saw it as a primer to uh, – you know, the show that we'll produce at some point in the future. And uh, I, Dan, I think you summed it up well at the end when you said uh, you respect everyone's beliefs. I do. But that's nice. I I'm do. not sure that I buy that, but I, but you verbalized <laughs> what do you mean, it. What do you mean you're not sure you buy I that? Buy, I like, buy what does it. that mean? I, I, I want to investigate that further. <laughs> like, did, have I left any breadcrumbs that I would not respect someone else's beliefs? Not during the conversation we just had, because there's a lot of people listening behind the glass, and I thought that you were tying up nicely so that you couldn't be tagged with some other comment. Okay. That's, that was a cruel cut down that you just had. I am not there. trying and to I cut will, you I down. I will remember it. It will, I stick, know you will. It will stick to the ribs. <laughs> I will. A la Adam and Eve. <laughs> well, one of them. All right. Let's get to it. And get this dagger out of my back. Well, it's not a. I spoke it to you in, directly. The real, by the uh, way, Judas situation <laughs> going on here. There, there it is. Uh, all right, today is the show where we give a full breakdown of everything to come in Week Five. Remember, there is one game being played tonight. It's Colts at Broncos. Al Kirk and Kaylee Hartung. Um, we'll have that game on Prime Video and NFL Plus, and we will have that covered on the Friday Fun Show tomorrow. But First, we get into all the games to come. So let's start as we always do. You want to get into it? Let's go. Let's please. Are you back, Greg? Are you all the way back? I'm all the way back. We gave this is a this is terminology. We gave you a blow on Tuesday. You needed it. You got a blow. Took a little blow. Now you're back. You what? (laughs) I had a great Monday Night Football recap though, fresh off the plane. JB Long. So that was that was good. You deserve some rest and recovery, Greg. You know, sometimes we catch a little bit of heat on the show about Mm. being uh, too Rams focused and then uh, the Rams get humbled and embarrassed by the 49ers and we have the voice of the Rams on to discuss. Well, I thought about that too. But it's JB, so it's totally cool There's no way to know who's going to win the game when it was Vikings-Eagles. I had a Vikings guy on, Arif, too. So it's like uh, you don't know who's going to win ahead of time. You don't. Coin flip. Someone noted it at one point, because I know you were very tired, Will, that you called it the Rams recap. (laughs) I'm not kidding, during the show. So, I mean, you know. We might want to be a little careful with the wording there, Suspicious of that, too. Uh, Let's get to the primetime games. Let's start with Sunday night football. Oh, Sunday night. It's a great one. It's not a great slate of games this week. Listen, it's football, so it's still great. But um, in terms of matchups, not a ton of great ones, but this one's very nice. Uh, The Cincinnati Bengals, who've gotten... Back off the mat after that ugly start to the year. That you know, it wasn't that ugly. The offensive line play was. But they lost two close games uh, to Pittsburgh and Dallas and then beat up on the Jets and then had that memorable, not for all good reasons, win over the Dolphins last Thursday night. Now they head to Baltimore to face the Ravens, who, Mark, have had a strange season so far because we talk about especially so many 2-2 two and two teams. I believe they're 15 or so right now. Like, you know. That's probably average, but it just feels like the middle of this league is so beefy. And the Ravens don't feel like a 2-2 two two team, but they blew the huge lead to Miami, 35-14. And then they blew a 20-3 advantage over Buffalo, both games at home. So it's like, how, what do you make of the Ravens right now? Yeah, I mean, you, you, that is surprising because they've been a dominant team at home. And there are a number of 2-2 two and two teams, two, I think, in the... AFC North, where you could make a case that they very easily could be 4-0. That's not how this works. By the way, 15 teams is the most 
through week four of a season in NFL history. So it, Nailed sa- it. it feels that and way. And there's more close games than ever before. The close game thing is crazy, but that doesn't surprise me anymore because I just come to learn that every game is going to come down to the last three minutes. But this was the team last year that the Bengals, I thought, started to really flex their muscles and stand out as an offensive juggernaut. Burrow put up 941 passing yards against the Ravens last year. I know they were banged up in their secondary. That is the most against any team in a single season in NFL history. Woo. Is that offense still with us? I don't think so because a lot of what they did against Baltimore was soft, and the Steelers was soften them up with Joe Mixon in the running game. They don't have that right now, but over the last two weeks, Burrow has been sacked three times after 13 times in the first two. So the, I, it's the line totally fixed. It has to do with who you're playing, but it does seem to, to be better. Last takes week, time, right? It takes a little yeah. time. They, they also, well, run blocking counts, though, and that's worse. Yeah, but I, I, it does. Joe Mixon looks a little worse, too, to me, but the run blocking worse. is clearly worse. How I think it's more though? about the run but the, blocking. But so much yeah. of it was about your, your franchise quarterback taking a beating back there, and at least for two weeks in a row, it's been lessened. That, and that's, to me, yes, the run game has a long way to go. I almost feel like, yeah, Mixon doesn't look quite right, but he really hasn't had a true opportunity to me either. But the uh, you do it one step at a time. And if you can't fix it all at the same time, Take care of Joe first, and Burrow went out of his way to compliment uh, the pass blocking after the Dolphins game. And that just, if you get him feeling good and get his, you know, the swag machine going with Burrow, it just changes this entire offense. Yeah, he he's playing better, but I don't think his coach, Zach Taylor, is helping him out. Like, even in that Dolphins game, it's, it's right back to the 1980s, run, run, pass. And it was a lot of, like, third and long because they don't run very well on the first two downs, mm. and it's predictable, and he made up for it with good plays. This is an ultimate, like... What's different about these teams this season type of week five game? Because you mentioned the 80 plus points the Bengals dropped on the Ravens last year. I mean, that was embarrassing for the Ravens. And now when these two teams match up, you have one of the best big play offenses in the league in the Ravens against one of the best big play defending defenses in the Bengals. And so who wins that battle? Then on the flip side, you know who are the three least explosive teams in the NFL this year, Mark? I would say the Panthers would be one. The Panthers are one of them, yes. And you know who the other two are? They played each other in a very memorable game last year that the Wesleyan brothers all attended and that the Rams Cincinnati. won. Cincinnati. At the, the Super end Bowl. of the game, Aaron Donald the pointed Rams at his ring. The, the Rams and the there Bengals. You go. Super Bowl 56. And then confetti fell. <laughs> And we did a podcast. Doesn't seem like a great uh, argument for that stat if they both both got to the Super Bowl. No, but, it's yeah. this year they're the least okay. explosive team. So All that right. well, we're in the weeds a little bit now. But so, okay, so I'm now following. it's the Bengals' <laughs> offense who can't who just can't buy a big play against a Ravens defense who has given up a lot of big plays. So it's like right. kind of best How on best, this? worst on worst here. T. Higgins, 124 yards and a touchdown and seven catches last week. Jamar Chase is your big play guy, so I will. I know you're always at target practice on Zach Taylor, uh, Greggy, for whatever reason. But yeah, there is. Ow! He's like he's like oh he's, he's like an I better change coach. my uh, polo. He's an offensive coach, and you could see Chase is frustrated on the field in these games. He's not having the big weeks that uh, became really a signature of the whole 2021 season. When you think about what do you think about when you think of 2021, Jamar Chase taking over the world. Absolutely. Uh, it's time for him to take over the world. And how about a primetime game against a Baltimore defense that sometimes gets in the weeds themselves and can give up a lot of big plays. I kind of like it. I, it felt like Justin Jefferson in London last week. He just felt due for a breakout game because these guys are too good. Jamar Chase, too good to be held down. He has a big game and is a difference in a Bengals win. And Ooh. I'm going to – no, no, but I, I kind of feel it. It feels good. feels right. I mean, you said T. Higgins is, you know, the number two, and and that's true, but I I, I want to get the stats exactly right. But he's played in his last 17 games. I think he has over 1,700 yards. He's a stud. 1,600. I mean, that's more than stud. That's Jamar Chase's numbers. He essentially has – But Jamar Chase is usually true. taking on the Absolutely. top cornerback and the opposing team. He, T. Higgins probably isn't doing that if Jamar Chase is on the field, but that's taking really not too much away from yeah, Higgins. You're starting to see some of the big plays come back. I think the first two weeks, really, there, there was very little, but – the pass to Higgins last week, the 59-yard touchdown. Chase has only had one catch over 20 yards, I, I believe it is. So got to change that. Got, that will change the Sunday. This, someone's going to be like a really good 2-3. and three. There's a lot of 2-2 two and two teams. I mean, part of it is by design, Dan. Mm-hmm. 
the NFL purposefully puts all the good oh, teams against this. each other at the beginning of the season. They put all the bad teams against each other. You get a bunch of two and two where, where these two and twos are not equal. Like the Ravens feel like an awesome two and two who then, lost two close games where they had big leads to really good teams. I mean, but here they could be. They still could be two fr- and three from another angle. They've collapsed in two games. Well, you, the I mean, anti-Ravens uh, angle. No, but I mean, but I think they, oh. look, at, they, look, over at, here. they look at themselves oh. and say, you, like, you're going to be 8-8 eight and eight and then have a 17th game if you blow games like this. I, you can't do that. I think you're right about what happens over there on 345 Park Avenue. But how many times did we see, say in the first four weeks, man, this is too early for this matchup? Yeah. Is it because they want everyone to and two? I think they have since like they 1988. Want to even it out. Yeah, yeah, they want to even it out a little bit. All right, let's move to Monday Night Football. The Las Vegas Raiders, they needed to win. That's why Zeuser shifted into the lock of the Raiders because they felt desperate, whereas Denver last week felt like a team that could play with a loss, and they certainly ended up playing with a loss. You really, you had a, almost plane. a preternatural sense for that game. I, I, fe- I felt about you. Thank you very much. You know, after what happened earlier in the show, yeah. you've come back with that, and that was so sincere that even Steven, we're good now. I know that you keep scoring, so I, I'm yes. trying to keep scoring with, with, <laughs> myself with where I stand with you. Yes, that was a major um, deficit reducer for you. Good to hear. I love you also. Friendship, goodwill. <laughs> um, all right, the Denver Broncos fell to the Raiders, so the Raiders get the win, and now, uh, good thing, because now they go to Arrowhead to face the Chiefs, and there are times where you want to, well, there's never really a time you want to face the Chiefs if Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback. <laughs> Preseason? But, you know, maybe a week ago this time, it wouldn't have felt like the worst time. But then, Mark, uh, that that version of Patrick Mahomes and the chief offense showed up against Tampa Bay and decimated Todd Bowles and company. So I'd be a little bit nervous if I was Josh McDaniels heading into this game at primetime, no less. Right. And I mean, these things I, I don't put a ton of weight in always, but Patrick Mahomes has dominated the Raiders in his career. And there's a lot of connective tissue between last year's Raiders team and this Raiders team. Chiefs are second in points per drive. They look at that. They look that way. They're doing it differently than they than they had in the past because Mahomes right now leads the league in short touchdown passes. Uh, they don't have a single player with a deep reception in twenty with multiple deep receptions in this season. They're doing it differently. We've seen that from the start. But the way that they operated against the number one defense in the league last week just makes you think. Just like everyone else, they're using this first month to figure out who they are. If this is who they are after one month, I'd be very concerned for the rest of the AFC West, which West, which in general has issues. This this Mahomes team is peaking. I do want to see, though, if the Raiders, I thought what they did against Denver was a Josh McDaniels type thing where what they're trying to figure out who they are, they just ran the ball a ton and they beat up Denver's defense. And you're, can you, is that sustainable week after week to be that kind of an offense if they want to be more run heavy and not put it all on Derek Carr? Well, there's so many good run heavy offenses right now in the NFL. I think they'd love to be another one. And I think that is the way you go after this Chiefs defense. I think the Chiefs defense, like many, are kind of built where you can run the ball against them if you're patient and you're effective enough. And I think that was really promising for the Raiders. I just don't know how they're going to get stops. Can Chandler Jones uh, enter the season? Hello? Uh, Hello? Because remember the whole idea? It's like, oh, wow, Chandler Jones and Max Crosby, right? What a duo. Mm Mm-hmm. There are a lot of great edge rushers right now in the NFL having dominant seasons. No one's doing any better than Max Crosby. He might be your your all pro. He's Watt esque he, right now. He's right there. And yet Chandler Jones has been very quiet Hello? week after week. Where are you? And uh we need a little more out of Chandler Jones. <laughs> Where are you, Chandler? <laughs> but it's true because if you're having that type of all pro season, just like we were just talking about T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, that should really help out a Chandler Jones, unless he has not decided to join us in the twenty twenty two regular season. I mean, he pops up and makes a couple of little plays here and there, but the pass rush Hello. isn't there. We we also could use like a a great Derek Carr game. You know, I know he played so could the Raiders better the last couple of weeks, especially two weeks ago. I would say I think say. that was the insinuation. Yeah, that's what Greg we're looking well. for. Oh, I thought we were just saying what we want. No, I, I mean, I imagine the Raiders. I saying. wouldn't okay. say we've just, gotten just cross-checking. a complete Derek Carr game yet. We're four weeks in. Yeah. Let's get one. And he's one and seven in his career versus he's had some Mahomes. big plays. Yeah, he's... I'll tell you, I'd, I'd be locking the hell out of this game if it was in the lock zone, but it's just on the other side of it. So uh, I'm staying away. But the Chiefs, I think, are going to roll. I'd love to see. Wow. I'd love to see the Raiders. And we when we sang, and appropriately so, Josh Jacobs' praises last week 
Um, but I think they're going to be in a situation in the Raiders where they need to throw the ball, and maybe it'd be nice to see some more Darren Waller explosiveness uh, with Devontae Adams. And it's a lot of mental errors when Waller's targeted. Things this season just especially go, go wrong. I'm curious. Like, I'm not ready to totally say the Chiefs are just the number one offense in the league and all the way back, just because they've been a little up and down this year. Their run game was amazing last week against the Bucks of all teams. Uh, but it hadn't done anything the two weeks before well, that. I got the sense that uh, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes met biweekly during the offseason, and uh-huh. they had that week four game against the Bucks circled. And they said, we are going to get so much revenge. We are going to break out all the good stuff for all that one week. And they got all the revenge last week. That was just mm. like an amazing performance that they haven't shown to me uh, you know, consistently. Yeah, they, points by game so far for KC, for a team that's – Figuring an, out a new world. 44 27, 17 in that loss, 41. Second in scoring, fourth in total. Oh, yeah, offense. They're, they're amazing. I look at their sp- they run every I week, look at though. how explosive yeah. they can be right now and say there aren't that many teams in the league if doing that can, at all. If they can be a top eight running team, let's say, forget about it. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Oh, over here, this guy with the slang. Well, <laughs> the affectation of. Uh, Northeastern. All right, let's get to the London game. We head to the UK. We were there this time last week. Now it is time for the Giants and Green Bay Packers. We were in the dressing room readying for our live show at this hour. Has it been a week already? One yeah. week ago. If you know, Should you I talk about time, time again? Zone. Yeah. And how it, it moves keeps, so fast. Keeps going. You can't tell me. It feels like a full week ago we were in that dressing room. I was pondering that, actually, before the show, and um, the last week has actually felt about 47 days long for me, (laughs) so I can can believe that. The Packers are making their international debut. How about that? And all they have to do is beat the Giants. But the Giants are also 3-1 and and got some pop and got some heat. Uh, So here we go. Packers, Giants, Daniel Jones. Let's see. I'm checking out the injury report. A lot of guys. He will practice today Uh, to an extent. Again, limited in practice. Uh, But yes. So Daniel Jones is a big piece of the puzzle here. Sounds like he'll play because uh, Tyrod Taylor coming off a concussion as well. And, you know, one thing I don't think we really spoke about or maybe we did. But again. Sunday's show is not really something I remember. Uh, <laughs> when they needed to uh, ice that win, Saquon Barkley was on, running the Wildcat, and that is uh, just – it gives you such a, a snapshot into how special his year has been so far and how much that has meant. I know they haven't been overly um, uh, overly impressive, Greg, but, but without, he has been. without Barkley, they'd be 0-4 right now. No, speaking of All-Pro, he, is, he, is he our All-Pro all running back through four weeks? It's hard to, trying to say think he's of not someone in the conversation, would, at least. Everyone, everyone completely ignores Nick Chubb no matter what he does, but I think Saquon would edge him out in this situation. Sorry, I think it'd Sorry, be Mark. Saquon. Well, you don't think Nick Chubb's looked uh, no, fantastic? Saquon's definitely in the Chubb conversation would be in the well. top two or three, but yard, yeah, they are the number one rushing team in the NFL, and it's not because of Matt Breida. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not because of Matt Breida. Yeah, he's it's not, he's it's on not Saquon Breida. Barkley's team. Well, and also they <laughs> like what saying a... that last week against the Bears. The reason that Barkley is so critical too. They had their wide receivers had three catches for twenty five yards. They're so depleted all over the re- rest of the roster. Right, on Dable, offense. show me something here because you're in a tough spot. You're going overseas, and you've gotten really creative with this running game. And he deserves some credit for this too. Saquon deserves the most, but they've been very creative how they've set it up. And you're going against a Packers team who. A little soft when it comes to the run defense. It's yet another season where we enter the year. What? Oh, the Packers, maybe a top loaded. five defense, loaded, loaded personnel. And they come into the season and they're just average. And I would say they're well below average when it comes to run defense. So the way this matches up, it's it's tough to win without having some passing game. The Giants have found a way. But entertain us, Dable. Give us a lot of creative right. runs. Hold the ball. Ugly it up. The Londoners love it. Yeah, you need you need 150 total yards from Saquon Barkley to make this a game. The Packers, that was one of the weirder games, the Packers-Pats game, because, and I know, Greg, you went back and rewatched it, so I'm curious your thoughts on this. I didn't think the Packers played poorly, and yet they were going back and forth with this Patriots team uh, starting Zappy Bailey or Bailey Zappy, and it's just like, <laughs> how did that happen in Lambeau? But it was the defense, because every time... 
Aaron Rodgers, who played great in that game and made a ton of big throws, every time they said, all right, we're going to get control of this game, they didn't get the stop. And it makes you think if Bailey Zappi and the Pats can do it, even a diminished Giants offense potentially could do the same mm. thing, especially in a funky environment at the uh, hot toddy. I don't see a lot of ways in for the Giants in this game. I mean, in theory, Aaron Rodgers, if you can pressure him, his passer rating drops 80 points. He's the second worst quarterback through four weeks against pressure. And the Giants, they've got Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau starting to come on a little bit. Wink Martindale pressures about as much as any defensive coordinator out there. But can you really see mm. them slowing down the Packers Usually over that the course work. of the whole game? It's like good luck right? doing it's that working. Wink stuff, trying to outsmart Aaron Rodgers. As Aaron Rodgers will tell you, he's one of the smartest men that it, that's ever lived. It's not playing so, out this season, though. So uh, that's fair. They Has do he blitz. said that? Has he said that no, about himself? No, I'm being mean. Yeah. He just sort of gives off that. Right. Uh, gives no, off he certainly that. is aware of his intelligence. I, yeah. You know, perhaps, I've, perhaps I've had, it is immense, but I've had I don't know if it's immense. Maybe it's not. I think he's I, I've said it before on this show. I think he's a dumb guy's you think idea he's a of dumb. a smart guy. No, I don't think he's a dumb it. guy. It, uh, I think more my... he's a dumb guy's idea of a smart guy. That's different. Ooh. That's different. I think they're coming together, though. I think this could be a total blowout. Uh, <laughs> I Romeo, love, I would love to hear you say that, Taron Rogers. I would not say it to oh, his face. He would mock rude. you up. He'd be like, let's, with his physical body. let's head to Jeopardy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Romeo Dobbs is coming on. Uh, he's going to have the best rookie season anyone's ever had with Aaron Rodgers. I'm pretty sure of it. Like, I know it's early, yeah. but he looks like a true... Uh, no one's ever gone above 700 yards even. James Jones was the top rookie ever with uh, Aaron Rodgers. And I think Dobbs is coming along, getting that trust. I got to say, Randall Cobb is starting to look a little better each week. It's Lazard is there doing his Lazard thing. Like, I feel like they're not far right. away from like being the Packers. They're not far away. All right. If Watson doesn't drop the ball week one, Dobbs, you know, that was a drop. Some people are getting hot in the pants about it should have counted as a touchdown, but you got to survive contact. Just make a couple of those plays, but he's been... He, he has his drops, but yeah. he also has his plays where it's like, oh, yes, this is an NFL receiver. All right, let's take a break, and when we return, draft time. All right, here we go. Got the primetime games out of the way. We got the London game out of the way, so let's now start the draft. And picking first... This is BS. What? Oh, you don't like the way th the cards fell for you here? Rosie? Why is it BS? That I got the first pick in this week of all weeks. Yeah, but why is it BS? It's the, not like it's, we changed the order to like the order is because it's 2013 all over again. This is I got Eric Fisher <laughs> and I got Luke Joko and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll take the upside pick, Barkevius Mingo. There's no Outers. right answer. I mean, Greg, you totally are, you're telling on yourself that was Geno Smith's draft. Ooh, well he was a great value, uh, and he's certainly there the best be quarterback. There might be some great values in this okay, draft. I mean, fair. you can't just you know that's give fair. up at okay, this thank point. Thank you for that amazing uh, compliment of the Jets. Great value on day two, Geno Smith. <laughs> would not would well, not change anything. Who did they take? They took. Uh, I think we got Sheldon Richardson that year. I think he was defensive rookie of the year. So that was a good pick. What a, at, what a draft for the Jets, as 13. you can see, it paid huge dividends. When you go to like Pro Football Reference, it it shows who's still active. But they, did, they took someone before that who did not do well, D. Milner. Oh, D. Yeah, he was not a good uh, corner. There's like eight people still active in the first two rounds on that draft. All right, but that is the, that, this is the 2013 draft, and Greg, you have to choose between Jokel and Fisher. What's it going to be? I'm taking the Rams and the Cowboys as my first overall pick. Now, there's a few reasons for this, just strategy-wise. The number one goal I had once I looked at this draft board was not end up with 49ers Panthers in the late window. There's only three games in the late window. And okay. all I want is to not have 49ers Panthers. I'm picking first. Right. There's a pretty good chance you guys are going to take your late window games before I get it back. So right. my number yes, one is. goal is avoid 49ers Panthers. And then among the other two late games, I got to say Rams Cowboys, I think is a very meaningful game for week five. Neither one of these teams uh, would be in my top 10 if I had a power rankings like Dan. Right. Uh, but I think it's meaningful. I think the Rams are heavy. And neither are, by the way. Right. And Rams I, fell to 11 this week. I think the Rams are heavy favorites in this game uh, in Vegas. And that seems crazy to me. I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game on uh, NFL.com slash game picks because I think this Cowboys defense is legit. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I think it's a terrible matchup for the Rams right now. And that's why I want to see what happens in this game. If the Cowboys can get to four and one in this with Cooper Rush winning four straight, and if the Rams are falling to two and three and really have big problems, to me this is a meaningful week five game, even if they're not two of the best teams. I mean, the Rams, to me, feel like they're in chaos, and it starts with their offensive line. The minute that Jeremiah Cologne came in for Coleman Shelton last week against the Niners, you had Matt Stafford, who he's never they've never even taken a snap together, center and quarterback, having to lay, basically call the protections at the line to help his center out, and then getting destroyed physically the minute the snap happened. Like it just, it, the Rams' issues start right up front. And we all know about the fact that if Matthew Stafford is going to be under duress, it's not through blitzing him, it's through essentially... Was last week, though. They blitzed the hell well, out of with him. Well, the with their line the way it is, that's true, too. And that's still the situation. But the Cowboys Hufanga. are essentially second in pressure rate when not blitzing. <laughs> so I they can do it both Hufanga. ways. Yeah, and I think Dan Quinn... Deserves a lot of love. Remember, everyone used to kind of make fun of him. Oh, he runs out this cover three, and that's all he does. Man, they change up what they are doing week to week, and they have a veteran group uh, that can handle that in the secondary, in the front end. Like, they're very creative. They change it up about as much as anyone, and I, I think they'll do it this week, too. And, yes, the de- defensive coordinator deserves a lot of credit, and the backup quarterback, and the defense itself. But sometimes people don't want to give credit to the guy in the big chair. Oh, yeah. Some zaddy energy from Mike McCarthy all season long has helped write this ship. And when a reporter this week said, mm, you guys are underdogs, listen to this zaddy heat, I call this. Mm. How often do you use the point spread to motivate the team? I don't know if I ever have. Uh, I know, you know, I have. I I, what is it this week? Five and a half. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're underdogs? <laughs> you know, uh, we're good. All right. Just wrote my Saturday night speech. I'm good. No, no, I've never used it. But I'll just say this: we're nobody's underdog. So, if you need a quote. I'll take the quote. We're nobody's underdog. That's some big zaddy energy, because a zaddy, a true zaddy, is someone who doesn't care what conventional wisdom is. Just I'm zaddy. Follow me. I'll lead you to safety. I will give you safe uh, from enemies. I'll keep you safe from enemies, and I will take you to the promised land. That's what Zaddy's bringing. And he'll, he does it with just a little bit of... I agree with you. I think there are different... Zaddy, stop it. There are different exactly. versions of Zaddy's. Uh, he certainly falls into uh, one of his own categories. Right. Dan, oh, Dan, Zaddy, you're I, so extra. <laughs> that little <laughs> definition of what a Zaddy is, just like I can imagine Dan just like asking uh, his, his lovely wife, Emily, to just like repeat that to him. <laughs> to tell it's me like, I'm This a is what I think. I think everybody can have their own zaddy uh, definition, but think about a big old bear. And I think that's what I think about Mike, Mike McCarthy. And there's a big bear cave and there's all this danger outside the cave. And everyone's saying, oh, we should run. And then zaddy goes, no, everybody get in the cave. I got you. And be eaten alive. Not with zaddy there. You don't have to buy into the zaddy energy well, I, of Mike I, McCarthy. No, I'm saying but that the proof is in the pudding I'm at three and sub, one. I'm subcategories of zaddy, mm. and he absolutely is right. One. You know who who uh, the Rams could use getting a little more zaddy energy from? Raheem. Mm, coming after Raheem. I'm not coming after him. I'm just saying the Rams are at the point in the season where we know the offense is weeks away from being uh, functional, or at least. Uh, carrying the team. Let, let's go defense. The defense for the Rams always cranks it up around December, which, you know, to be fair, is when it kind of matters. Feels like a good time. This feels like a good time. Like, let's dominate a game Rams defense. They've been fine. They haven't been bad, but they've just been fine. They have not been where they were carrying the team to that Super Bowl. And they could really use a game where they make the big plays, where they make Cooper Rush make the mistakes. Still some, otherwise, I don't know how they win this game. Some swagger on the Rams side. Bobby Wagner... Uh, speaking on Cooper Rush and his ability to um, play well with pressure, uh, said just because a guy has been good against the blitz so far doesn't mean he'll be good Sunday. So the Rams feel like they can uh, Hmm. get to Cooper Rush. And I mentioned on the Tuesday show, when you watch that game, yes, the stat line looks amazing again for Cooper Rush, but he had two interceptions that were wiped away by penalty. I think he can make mistakes and perhaps will in this game because I don't think Los Angeles is feeling in a good mood after getting embarrassed on Monday night. We have a lock of this game. Wow. It's outside this room. Okay. Hey, heroes. I'm here at the Cincinnati International Airport. The wife and I celebrating our wedding anniversary today. Hmm. 
And she's a pretty cool wife because she said, let's go watch FC Cincinnati take care of business against DC United Sunday afternoon. And for a nightcap, we'll go watch the Bengals take care of business against the Ravens. It's pretty now, good. Now, Tim really wanted to lock, lock the Bengals up here. I don't see it, though. I could see him winning, but I think it's going to be a tight game, and I'm not confident enough to lock it. However, <laughs> Mike wanted to go with the Jets because he loves Dan so much. Oh. Can't see that one either. Phil wanted to go with the Chargers, and I could see that one. We are kind of on the fence. <laughs> then Eddie said, hey, let's go all out. Take the Cowboys. Cowboys on the road against the Rams? Interesting. But I can't see it happening. Come on, Ed. There's two things we know about you. You're a confident guy, and you're wrong most of the time. The Rams take what? care of business. Wow. So Lock it that's up. Really happy anniversary, babe. The Cincinnati Zoo and happy anniversary uh, to Nick. Um, and it's a great wife move. Good job, Stephanie. Yeah, Nick and Stephanie, the anniversary. Uh, so they're not even – these are, at this point – they don't even like figure it out together. It's it's run by Nick, and then Nick, if Nick doesn't like it, he'll go the opposite way. I mean, he's taking yeah. clear charge that of, was, of this. It's his third was, straight message. So that was rambling, and then I didn't understand. He just totally flipped Eddie's uh, pick just to get right. back at Eddie again. That's why it's the zoo. Um, all right, let's now move to the second pick. It is Mark Sessler's choice. Greg, I agree with your strategy number one about getting this late game window out of there. But I like this game a lot. And I'm taking Eagles at Cardinals, 425 p.m. on the East Coast, if that's where you live. Different times elsewhere. Okay. I want to see if Kyler Murray, what they did in the second half last week against a bad Carolina team, can it translate? All seven of his pass and rushing touchdowns that come in the second half. They you have took been, the Cardinals again, huh? Yeah. Every week this but year, I'm I am taking this because of the Eagles, because I actually haven't had a chance to watch the Eagles on Sunday as a game I covered. Mm. And I find them to be, there's just a lack of dominant teams out there. Are they one of them? I don't know. They've been that team so far. There really isn't a weakness. Their defense, number one, has caused total havoc. And I'd look at Jalen Hurts and just see the way that there was a touchdown he had last week where he barreled into the end zone through two defenders. I love this, I love this quarterback. His teammates love him. I think their offense is super var varied because of what he brings to it. And to me, Arizona's defense, we saw what happened against Kansas City. They have not figured out that side of the ball. This could be a wipeout on the road. And that is why I am so confident that I will be locking up the Philadelphia Eagles. And I've switched my lock about seven times, so we'll see how this goes. Hmm. All right, can you switch it again? Because this was my lock, too. I don't like us being on the same lock. It's oh, you boring. guys don't have good lock chemistry. No. 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 Like, you can switch. When well, Zeus and Sassy uh, lock up, it's, it's good. When, when Greg, it's oil and vinegar when it's rosy <laughs> and uh, Sassy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to go well for you guys. Well, my whole thing is I just try to lock against the Cardinals whenever possible. I think I have almost every week this year. Not last week. Uh, but uh, they're just, to me, one of the worst teams in the league. That's why all these two – like, they have the same record as the Ravens. And it just – I mean, they they found a way to beat Carolina. I respect that. But to no me, they, I, they, I don't you know, think we need to respect that too much, though. They're just so to hand out lollipops. thin up front. They are a Pat team head, maybe. that knows yeah. seems adequate, right? That they don't have the personnel defensively to just play straight up. So they're basically going to blitz almost every snap. I mean, every other snap. I think they're second in the league in blitz percentage, and that was the idea. You saw Tampa uh, do it well against Jalen Hurts a year ago, certainly in the playoffs. And I thought it was really interesting last week that the Jaguars' defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell came from Tampa, and I thought they did a lot of the same things that Tampa did in the playoff game, and it did not bother uh, the Eagles whatsoever. This will be a cleaner game in terms of the, the weather is not going to be a problem, but I just don't think you can blitz Jalen Hurts like crazy anymore with those two guys winning man-to-man uh, -man on the outside. They've also been, they've been dominant on the ground, like two performances of 200-plus yards. They have 10 touchdowns on the ground. They can do it all. And I mean, I'm trying to think you that Bucks eagles playoff game feels from another universe right now because I can't think of a team or a quarterback that have evolved more between now and then. I think Kyler Murray had some uh, things to feel good about in that game. That was a real yeah. defense. I like that the comeback did not come from like, hey, Kyler, go make some crazy plays. 
it was Kyler Murray making a comeback from the pocket with a lot of beautiful throws. And Marquise Brown, who people got on for uh, you know asking out it's of Baltimore, great. he's making himself some money. You can't yep. say that, that that it's backfired on him. He's going to put up a huge season, and he looks legit. He's earning himself some money. There is a scenario because it's been everything around the Cardinals has been negative pretty much since – really December of last year when they began their fade. Uh, But if you want to spin positive, yes, they've come out of a rocky start to this year at two and two. They get the Eagles who are on top of the world, but you know, they're not, they're not, they can't, it's not like they can't be beaten. They were fell behind two touchdowns to the Jaguars last week and you get them in your building and maybe you can get a win here that changes everything in terms of the vibes around the organization with DeAndre Hopkins now coming into view in a couple of weeks. And if he comes back and he's DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Brown is healthy and a big playmaker on the other side, then, then you might have something here with the Cardinals. But this is a, I think it's a pretty good lock. I think it's, you feel like the Eagles, the way they're playing, especially how poorly the Cardinals get out of the gate. Um, Cliff Kingsbury, you want to, you know, put some, take some people to task. And I know this isn't the first, per- I'm not the first person to do that, but find a way to get your offense going before the third quarter, because against an Eagles offense, that's killing everybody. You're going to be down 28 to seven by midway through the third quarter. If you go down that road again, no, keep presenting that other scenario where the Cardinals change their season around. Cause Mark is feeling very tenuous about this. <laughs> He, what? he brought up before the show how uh, anxiety-ridden he is about this lock, and he mentioned three different <laughs> potential locks, and this wasn't even one of them. You well, were just like, you were talking, you might you maybe want to do the Thursday night game, which I was, too, I was thinking about the Thursday night game, too. I mean, you seem more there flustered, another Greg. one. You're no, like, I just you, want you, you can't off handle of the fact that two people are locking up the same thing. Is, for is some... that a little bit strange, by the way? This is a I great thing. Why it, does it bother what? you so much when... Like, why do you need the the spotlight for your lock? No, I think it was way back. I mean, when I think we, we can figure that out. When we started, <laughs> why, why why would that matter? Oh, it's I, your turn. I mean, why can you not team up with another human to, there was to, to accomplish something? There was something about uh, early when we did this lock coming that we should each just be on our own. I don't know why that just seemed more yeah, like that a. Was never- a but you you never had any grasp of what makes the segment great. I had to make sure you couldn't put it under the ground. Well, I did. As out you of, know. I did out of um, almost apathy because you guys were just sick of me winning year after year after year. But that that era has ended. Really, where's with a the trophy? Thud, with a thud. Yeah, where is that trophy? I said oh, it's ended with a in thud. my study. Not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Under the chandelier. Uh, all right, let's move on. Zeusers up. Like it. I like this value pick here. Steelers at Bills. Uh, anytime I get to watch the Bills on a Sunday is fun. Uh, they are to me, um, obviously. One of the great teams in the league and Josh Allen watching him play football and getting paid for it. Sign me up. What do I need to see from the Bills? I'm going to ask you boys that. Um, What do they need to get better at? But the Steelers, uh, if this was still Mitch Trubisky universe, I would not be picking this game. But there is some juice to this team with Pickett involved and the fact that he really does... uh, Add a dimension to this offense. Now he's going to make mistakes. He made mistakes against the Jets that played a big role in them getting beat, but he also went in there and showed no fear, scored two touchdowns on the ground, took a bunch of shots downfield, and I think we're going to see more of that. And I think part of they have to be that way because if they try to have a conservative game plan against the Bills, uh, this team has never won Pittsburgh with T.J. Watt out of the lineup. They're 0-7, I believe it is, lifetime. So, yes, the Bills are going to score, and the only way the Steelers keep it close is if Pickett is kind of a revelation in his first career start. It's probably not going to happen. I'd lock the hell out of this game if I could, uh, but <laughs> I want to see... Two, this is a two-touchdown. You, you, can, yeah. you cannot. Uh, I would, like, I'm just curious to see how Pickett reacts in this circumstance, because he's going to have to throw the ball. I love what Pickett said this week. He basically said, like, I- I'm not gun-shy. I'm going to get the ball to these guys on one-on-one. Cause this is what the ride receivers were complaining about in Pittsburgh. So at least give it a shot and see how it goes. I mean, he does have a gunslinger type of persona to him on, on one level. His confidence is very high. It was time to do this. Uh, this is not last year's Steelers team on any level, though. Defensively, without Watt, you just mentioned they have three sacks in their last three games. I don't like that going up against Josh Allen. You said, what do the Bills need to do to get, to get better? I mean, technically, I just think it's get healthier. But even with all their issues in the secondary, they're still the number one pass defense in DVOA. So how do you do that if you're Kenny Pickett, go up against one of the best coach defenses in the league, and somehow, at the same time, with your defense, which is undermanned, slow down Josh Allen? I think I think the Bills are, are probably agitated after the way they got out of the gate so slowly against the Ravens. Uh, mm. I don't see that happening again on any level. 
Right. This is such a tough matchup. To me, the Bills' defense is one of the top three or four most meaningful developments of the first month of the season. Not that they haven't had a great defense before, but the fact that I look at this pass rush and it shows up every single week, and I believe that's going to be there to the end. And this is like a superpower that actually is a little better defensively than I even expected going into the year. And I know they've had injuries and they're not going to get Mike a hide back, but they are preventing big plays. They only gave up 20 points to Lamar Jackson in the Ravens. I know there's rain there, but that was the most explosive offense in the league. And I just really trust them. But I want to see what Pickett does because I I almost thought he got a little undersold what happened last week. Those weren't the interceptions weren't great decisions, but more than that, they were bad luck. I mean, they both of them hit the receiver's hands, literally. He was late on the deep shot first. Both, both bad decisions. Second shot was thrown into coverage. But you see Third it, was not his fault. Yeah, the, yeah. Both bad decisions, but you could you could replay those plays a lot of times and get no interceptions. Well, don't we forgive him to some degree for it being his first start? Sure. I mean, he well, also no, did a lot of The biggest thing, though, too. is he had three or four dimes in that game. Right. The, the, the pass he made to Fryermuth where he was at, getting absolutely smoked uh, oh, by, yeah. by uh, one of the Jets defenders. It was a defensive tackle. I think tackle. it was Quinn and Williams. It was incredible. And then he had a couple where, yes, he gave Pickens a chance to make a play. showed very nice touch. I, I liked what I saw out of Kenny Pickett, and I really liked it in the preseason, too. Should have started against the Jets, but, you know. Should have started from week one because now here he is starting, and they've got the hardest schedule in the league for the next right. month. It was uh, sus, as the kids would say. It's snakes to me. Here we go. Let's do it. Jets Dolphins. Good. Uh, that shows um, respect because I don't like it when you leave that game out there when it's actually a good game because I would take, you know, but we're not like, allowed to take it. I normally. try not to do that because yeah, I, I try to good. keep the sanctity of the draft intact. The Dolphins at the Jets. Really interesting here. Um, let's start with the Miami side. Obviously, Teddy Bridgewater will start in place of Tua, who was immediately ruled out earlier this week. And and uh, we talked about it a little bit on Tuesday. It, they're in a tough spot, the Dolphins, because they know everyone's watching them. So it becomes a situation like how long do they feel comfortable keeping, keeping them out? They'll probably be back next week. But for now, it's Teddy time uh, against the Jets defense. It's been pretty hot or cold um, in general, hot and cold. More cold than hot, uh, I would say, but... At the end of the four games, they're two and two because they've gotten some timely stops on defense and their offense has come to life. So I think for uh, the Dolphins is can they keep the offense moving with Teddy Bridgewater? I think they will, because, again, uh, the reason I think Tua in part has thrived early on uh, is because he makes quick decisions, gets the ball out and is accurate and then lets all these studs uh, headlined, obviously, by Waddle and Tyreek um, do their thing. And I think Teddy can do that as well. Um, And on the Jets side, I just want to see some growth now. I thought that was really fun to watch Zach Wilson uh, and how he uh, came on at the end of that game. Six for six in the final drive uh, really did look poised and made some big throws. Uh, But a home game, another chance for the Jets to establish themselves is a little bit different than past years. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a potentially a fun game, a close game. That's my hope anyway. I mean, Zach Wilson completely won over his teammates with that fourth quarter. And I think for the psyche of the team and for Jets fans in general, because I think you were stunned by that, right, Dan? The way it happened? Uh, yeah. I mean, they it looked like, just like the Cleveland game, it looked over. And then uh, the fact that they were able to go on that drive, get the interception of Pickett, and then go right down the field again. It was, it was really impressive. And again, I'll use the word poise with Zach Wilson. Sometimes in his accuracy, he's very hot and cold as a passer himself. And they need, he needs to make a... The easy ones. He's got to get the. He's got to get that part of his game figured out. But his ability to move around, evade the rush, uh, make plays that Joe Flacco would have been dead and buried on. You saw it immediately in that first game. I just. I don't see it as a big downgrade to Teddy because I think you've got a similar type quarterback in the sense that the accuracy is there. Um, he's he he meshed well with Tyreek Hill a week ago, and it's on Sauce Gardner and the rest of the defense to slow down Waddle and Tyreek Hill and. I don't think that this is a. This was probably the best backup quarterback in the league. So we were talking about him as taking over Tua's job. Had Tua stumbled in the off season. Tua right, just and well. I think it's such a quarterback friendly system. Teddy should be fine, but it's a great test for Sauce Gardner, who was Daniel Jeremiah's number one rookie in the league so far this year. Uh, DJ Reed's been really good. So now these 
these two cornerbacks are getting a lot Big of love. Test. Getting a lot of love. Big time test uh, for Sauce. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see a little uh, Mike McDaniel, Robert Sala for the first time. Mm. Former, uh, you know, teammates Colleagues. in San Francisco. You know, Robert Do we call Sala? teammates if they're on the coaching staff? Oh, yeah. Which is colleagues. colleagues? I okay. With, yeah. I mean, but Salah was the guy who Sala, was like, Sala. you know, the big kind of handsome guy getting all the mm-hmm. attention on the sidelines. And then there was just like old little Mikey on the sidelines. Not, not really getting too is there much. Something? Do you see something there? I feel like you're connecting with Mike McDaniel. No, some I mean, okay. <laughs> Everybody looking you at Robert the big, Sa- beefy, no, Mike Florio at PFT. It's like, <laughs> what about me? I I should be noticed too. I'm Mike McDaniel. I think what I like is that there's an AFC. <laughs> The East coaching matchup where they're from the same tree and it's not a freaking Belichick tree. I and mean, it's nice to have a little yeah. different. But I, I really do think that's interesting when two coaches who could be going against each other for a long time are matching up for the first time and it's offense fun. versus defense. Uh, that part of it is uh, is a lot of fun. And I love the idea that if the, you know maybe the Jets-Dolphins rivalry, which has been dormant for a long time, it's reborn here, but the Jets need to play up to their ability. Uh, you mentioned DJ Reed. There are two MVPs of this team so far. Uh, DJ Reed, who's been all pro-esque. He has not allowed a touchdown. He's not allowed a catch over 20 plus yards. Hmm. Uh, one catch of 15 plus yards, 32.9 QB rating. This is from Zach Rosenblatt, the new beat writer for The Athletic. And he ranks fourth among QBs in snaps per reception allowed, according to PFF. He's been Awesome. So Sauce has been really good. So the cornerback situation is good. And give it up for Elijah Vera Tucker, who was a left guard as a rookie, the fir- former first-round pick, kicked over to right guard for this year. And then in a little surprise move by the Jets, who have been absolutely savaged at the tackle position by injuries, kicks to left tackle uh, against Pittsburgh and plays really well. So that his Is he going to stay there? Uh, until sense. until one of these guys comes back off IR, he will stay there. But that was part of what the Jets were so excited about with Vera Tucker was that he, his versatility. And, man, to step up out of nowhere and play left tackle at a high level, that's there, huge. There's like five, six teams right now that are down to bare bones at left tackle. It's been that kind Some of season. Too, the Ravens. Right. And so for the Jets to climb out of that, that's not the team I would have picked. So, But their whole well season, I mean – they they are such a better um, team than they were two years ago. They just have more players. They they just they really yes. are. And that you know that's the Joe Douglas's credit. But this whole season's about Zach Wilson. And I thought that was a really intriguing first start for Zach Wilson. It wasn't just the fourth quarter. He had a throw in the first quarter where he ripped an opposite hash timing route to Elijah Moore that just showed off. All of his arm strength that was like a Josh Allen type of throw. And the thing I was really excited about is he delivered that ball like five steps before Moore made his break. It showed incredible anticipation. When Zach Wilson threw the ball on time in that game, I I thought that was his best game as a pro. I thought it was better than that one he had in week 16 last year. I think he showed some real... Uh, maturation. Now that said, there were other plays that were like the plays themselves were roller coasters. And mm. once he holds on to the ball, you can almost hear his mind. Yeah, it speeds up. Like going yeah. second read, third read, yeah. fourth read. What is happening? And so there's like major ups and downs. But that's what you want to see. At least I thought there were four or five really impressive plays in that game by Wilson, which you just didn't see as a rookie. I would love. I He's would definitely love. hit the weight room. Looks beefy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got to stay healthy, too. I would love, love, love for him to string another good start in a row because then you could really start to buy in on this. Uh, But we shall see. Let's take a break and the draft will move on. All right, we are back. So Tugboat just hit the double. It's time for the Sunday Drive presented by Toyota. And then Mark (laughs) Sessler is on the clock. All right, I'm going to go Chargers at Browns. Uh, Chargers have owned Cleveland last couple times out with with with. Herbert in there. I mean, it's just Cleveland's defense, I think, is a sitting duck on that front. Uh, there, I, I, We'll see what happens with Miles Garrett. He's been practicing. Uh, Clowney's not been around. If you have no pass rush, I don't like that situation at all. I think it comes down also to Cleveland's offense, which has been metrically and to the eyes, a uh, nice surprise, this offense with, with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. I mean, he's made a couple killer mistakes late. That, hap- that, that whole Jets loss opened up with a Brissett interception. He had a bad one last week. But other than that, honestly, he's been really clean. And I thought he's been a he's, he's, he's gotten guys open in that offense and they've run the ball so well. The key matchup here for me is Nick Chubb. He's gotten about 85% of his 
yardage. And again, I do think he's looked like the best back in the league next to Saquon Barkley. Um, on outside runs, he's dominant that way. He's just been a dominant runner on that front. And the, and the Chargers are essentially the worst team in the league defending that. So that's hmm. like Cleveland wants to. I know it's it sounds vanilla, but they've almost been 4-0 by just going with the formula. Like, let Nick Chubb operate at his height and you got a chance to win these games and you got to find a way to close them. You can't, I see this thing being close to the end and if they were to lose this thing in a close game and go two and three, you have to say it's one of the more frustrating beginnings for a team out there because of the way they've lost these close games. They have a chance, I think, to be a team that's alive when the quarterback that they brought in, Deshaun Watson, is returning to the team and I think Jacoby Brissett deserves a ton of credit for how he's played. I don't think anyone thought he would have done this. No, I think it's totally covered. Him and Nick Chubb and Stefanski have totally covered up a defense which just seems really poorly coached to me. They're 30th in DVOA. It's like the like, scheme doesn't work. They're not as bad in the traditional numbers, but it's partly because the Browns offense just hold the ball for so long and are efficient in not putting their defense in bad positions. It was embarrassing how they got run over a week ago, even though they were playing three linebackers. I know Miles Garrett wasn't there, and he's going to be back, but Garrett wouldn't, doesn't make that huge of a difference. Maybe they win that game. I don't know. But giving up 14 straight runs like they did, and then there's always confusion in the back end. Denzel Ward's given up a lot of plays. I know he had that interception a week ago, but... There just seems to be something missing, which is unfortunate. If they just could improve to average defensively, then yes, they might be 4-0, uh, and I would expect them to win this game. I did pick them in this game. I think they're a little better than the Chargers, but I I would have drafted this if you didn't because I just am so curious. I don't know who's going to win this game. I'm very curious. I think it's huge see. for the Chargers that Jamari Sailors, Sailors come in for Rashawn Slater and looked good last week. I mean, that could have been like the Achilles heel that essentially thwarted their offense. Yeah, and I thought watching the Texans game, but you know, they didn't do a great job closing out that game. And it really did watching it because last week was such a whirlwind for us. I was stunned. Like the Texans after a turnover had a oh, chance. They were in, they were in the red yeah. zone yeah. with a chance to go ahead late. And the chargers were charging it up and Houston is what Houston is. So they were able to escape with that. But so, yeah, there's still things to be concerned about. Obviously the defense uh, losing Joey Bosa is huge, but it was, it was promising to see, um, Khalil Mack at a huge sack in a big spot there. He needs to step up and kind of carry that uh, front seven while Bosa's out. And Herbert looked healthy and was zinging the ball like Herbert. So uh, you add in Eckler getting going with the three touchdowns. This is going to be a good matchup. I think this will be a close game because I think the Browns are going to keep on playing close games um, mm. unless it's one of those situations, like you're saying, if, is the defense so out of sorts uh, and Miles Garrett, is he in? Is he out? Uh, we don't know yet. Sounds like he'll probably play. Right, but what Clowney's version of him? probably out, though, still. D- is this Keenan a situation Allen, where... by the way, is now reaching a month where he hasn't played. That's been... Yeah, that's a problem. Them. And, like, the Chargers, for, for as much as we love him, we love the quarterback. Um, we Have we seen them really explode on offense yet and have that big game? Is it coming in this game? They went off against the Browns last year. We shall see. J.C. Jackson needs to show up for them. He's been hurt, and he's been... Maybe the worst I feel like player. They botched that from the very beginning. Uh, and the worst player in their secondary. Normally, this would be the matchup where you'd be like, "Oh, he, they put him on Amari Cooper. It's one versus one." But I, the way he's playing right now, I don't. If I don't you look at their roster, they have to be one of the more disappointing teams in the AFC in general. All right, yeah. that was the Sunday Drive presented by Toyota. Up next in the draft is Greg Rosenthal. Okay, I got to take St. Seahawks because my guy Gino uh, is in this game. And uh, I didn't like just hearing how great Gino was doing last week and not watching it live. So uh, I want to take this. And uh, I like mess. And this is is just all mess. There's no way that this game isn't going to be messy. One second. When did they stop giving uh, the London teams a bye? The teams themselves requested not to have these post-London buys. Oh. They didn't like hmm. having it early in the season. Good question. I, I was thinking the same thing. Does that just start this year? I think last year some yeah. of the teams that went to London did not take a Got post-London it. buy, and some did. The teams were like, we don't want an early buy in general, and we'd rather just uh, put it off, and it's not. Wage right. through the exhaust. I mean, if we were football players having just returned back from London, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily want to uh, jump right back and play a game this week. But... Well, we did, though, and the equivalent of what we do. Right. We I were would, right back in the lineup. I'm not sure that physically, Monday like from and Tuesday. a— Taking physical punishment but we're the same. I think it's that's why we're not. Sometimes we'll get yeah. like, oh, why are you? Why do you call yourself heroes? Uh, <laughs> we're here right now. 
Right, we're broadcasters. So plug in. Uh, just, go ahead, Greg. Just can, can we uh, develop a defense, uh, Seattle? Because the Geno thing it is a fun story. But imagine how fun this Seahawks team could be if their defense starts to improve. Then they can stick around, I think, in this NFC West race that their offense is a legitimate weapon. It's not just because of Geno running the offense. It's because Rashad Penny is still stuck on that six yards per carry number. We're at it like a year and a half now where he's just running for six yards per carry. I mean, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Their two tackles, who are both rookies, are playing really well. Uh, Geno's finding Lockett and Metcalf in good situations. Like, I I think they could be a story that is going to bother you all season long. Like, long if this if their defense can actually step up and just not be league worse. Just get us to average Pete Carroll. I mean, they're last in yards and points per drive, the defense. They've been that way all season. I mean, there's a reason that shootout with Detroit though, happened. And they're very young. No, of course, so it's maybe young. there's some hope But I think here. like it's like the Smith thing, now watching him over four games, like I, I kind of, Greg, initially was, I it I know you're always pounding the table for it, and I think that's sort of where my annoyance came from, but like sure, watching him last week, <laughs> Like it's legit. He's playing great. He's playing the best football of his career, and he's not. It's not. They're not just scheming around him. I mean, he's da- he's now with DK Metcalf. There's real chemistry They've there. They've thrown the ball down the field yeah. a lot. Yeah, I mean, the last they're not weeks. that limited on offense. They have to, you have to give a lot of credit to how their game plan is set up too. I mean, they're putting Geno. Geno has never been a seventy plus percent completion guy. Like accuracy was never his calling card. So. To see him doing that, that there's some scheme there. To be in there fair, he as, hasn't as well. played in like nine years, so like consistently. Right. That, that to is be fair, worth, that, it wasn't like I'm he just was saying that's a long on time. Alcatraz during no, that time. It's because no. he was, you know, he widely was thought to be a backup, and I still think that's who he is. And like I said, let's see where things fall come January. But for right now, he is absolutely playing great. Rashad Penny's playing great. DK Metcalf, when he's not on the poop cart, playing great. Uh, so there are some things to get excited about. Still, I don't know if they could stop anybody, but this feels Step like a up good, Saints defense, a good so. spot for Seattle well, again. The Saints defense, really? I thought they're, did a, they're pretty big underdogs here. I they do did like a good Seattle job against, cover. They did a good job against Minnesota last week. I mean, they shut they, down drives. They were they were good, but they they I agree with you, Mark. But they've been like ninth or tenth or so in most stats this year. And the idea was Dennis Allen, you're bringing him back. You're bringing all these veterans back. There's a lot of talent on this defense. They need this defense to be special. They haven't been special. Why? They're yeah. Why okay. would the Saints? Why should the Saints at this? juncture be favored against anybody really outside of the real dregs of the league i agree with you not by five yeah, or that's six some points. respect that's some serious respect for the saints and a saints team that you know they are getting alvin kamara back it sounds like that could be helpful for andy dalton right well, i think andy it's dalton so probably fits with, with alvin kamara a little bit better if you're going to dump it off to him and try to make something of him they gotta versus winston out. they got to make him a focal point of the offense uh, and Michael Thomas looks like he'll be out again. Uh, we're not sure, but he is not practicing. All right. Lions and Patriots. This is crazy. I think this is the first live Patriots games I've had. That's sort of sad. Um, but He's I'm back, gl- baby. I'm glad it's this week uh, because it's got the team of ATL. It's got the Patriots. Both of these teams are looking at this game, and they're saying, Juicy, this is a winnable game. But the- hey, hey, Lions, do we need to give the Lions a pep talk? I don't uh, know. We make you a team of ATN. Go win a game. <laughs> win a we, you play to win the game. Win a game. Go to New England against Zappy Bailey, Bailey Zappy, or a really uh, compromised Mac Jones, or Brian Hoyer, whoever it is. Get a couple stops and win a game 27 to 14. Hell, 27 to 24. This is the Lions. The score win. will, it doesn't matter who's playing, the score has to end 41 to 38. Do That's- not. This is a very it is a very special honor. We haven't even done it for a couple of years. Do not go to Foxborough in 2022 and not come away with a W. And yet, Don't do I, it. I, yet, I think watching this Patriots team, which team do you think's played better the last few weeks? I think it's the Patriots. That's are getting there. They're I, getting I, well, there. What side of the ball? I mean, Detroit's offense has been on fi- completely on fire <laughs> for also, the most they've part. Had, like, statistically, the worst defense ever. Well, I know, but that's the only reason. Yeah. Like, if they had it, you talk about Seattle having a, a yeah. competent defense. Lions would be four and zero right now. That's absolutely Their fair, and that's why is, it's uh, like astonishing. Aaron Glenn, what you're doing is not working, bro. Like, at some point, I, hey, we're going to be aggressive. That's who we are. Well, who you are is terrible. 
Stop being so well, aggressive. Well, Campbell came out and said it. We played it on the Sunday night show. He didn't want to kill Aaron Glenn, but he said, we're going to be asking questions, and you, you can expect there to be changes in and they're, how they're going about They're another one here. of these teams that blitzes like crazy, and they leave their cornerbacks on an island, and Oruarie is giving up so many big plays. Jeff Okuda, who was having a good season, uh, was not last week against DK Metcalf. They're asking too much of these guys. Their injuries are almost all on offense, so there's not really a great excuse why this front seven – especially, which on paper, they drafted a lot of players, not just Hutchinson, but at defensive tackle. It's not working. They're not getting pressure. Even with the blitzes, they're not getting pressure. And uh, it, it, this is a dangerous game for both these teams because I think one of these teams is going to be 1-4 and four and be deeply disappointed by being 1-4. and four. I mean, you say take make a stop, Dan. You're right. I mean, they have had... Just a their, couple. Their defense, they've only made a couple. In 15 trips to the red zone, teams have had 13 touchdowns. And it's like I like you. If, the, the, if you're Jared Goff, you've gone and thrived on offense with a bunch of people. DeAndre Swift's not going to be in this game. Amon Ross St. Brown is missed games. I mean, you've done this He's with probably out too. DJ right. Shark, we didn't even mention, who's been great for them, uh, missed last week and might be out this week. This too. is this team is very unified. We saw that in Hard Knocks. But when teams start to to crumble and their Fisher forms, it's because one side of the ball is simply letting the other side down week after week. I mean, what more can you ask Detroit's offense to do at this point? And they're sitting there looking at potentially one and four. I don't know if the Patriots on offense are going to be able to provide the explosive plays. They can plays. run, though. These are the two worst run defense in the league, according to DVOA, 31 and 32. And this is the backfield I feel like Bill Belichick's always dreamed of. I don't think he's ever had two pure runners this good at the exact same time. They are always trying to draft these guys in the middle of the rounds, and so they don't spend on running backs, and they're always trying to spread it around, and they hit home runs. Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson are awesome runners, and they, they, and on paper, they can run block pretty well. They have some missed assignment, but remember everyone made fun of old Cole Strange back mm-hmm. on draft? Cole Strange is getting it done. Like, yeah, but is that a surprise? Not, they, they not totally. Yeah. They, they've they got a good little rookie class here. Jack Jones is playing great at cornerback. Marcus Jones is a fun little uh, return guy. Like, They've got some people I think that they could be excited about, but they got to start winning some of these I games. I think we predicted Cole Strange after all the bits was going to be an all-pro and then sign a huge contract with someone else, and then the Patriots get a pick, and it would be you know glory forever. <laughs> when it was him one-on-one against Kenny Clark last week and he was making some blocks, so I was like, gosh, did Bill, Lions. Bill did it again. Guys, come on. We know you're banged up on the offensive side, but we've already seen that you could score even when banged up on offense. Couple I mean, stops. can we jump ship from a team of ATL Never. team? If we didn't jump Never. from the Mitch Trubisky Bears... I don't, I don't even remember that being I, an actual thing that we did. But we'll never. You know what it was? I think Wes was kind of into them, and then we sort of did forget about it as the season went along. They got no pop. Well, we could do that. I don't want to do that, no, though. No, I don't want to do like that. I feel like to be true to the team of ATN, you need to ride or die, and if you end up eating poop over it, eat the poop. Okay, they win here. They're in, good sh- they're in a good place. Because they're still – here's the thing with the team of ATN. People that are <laughs> – Stop. Uh, the the thing that needs to be understood, they don't need to win the Super Bowl. It's not like, oh, they're going to go. No, be entertaining. Check. They're entertaining every right. week. But you can't lose every week. Dan Campbell can't lose every week. So here's a place where you should get a win. All right, Mark, you're up. All right, I'm going to pick the Falcons at the Bucks. It's a good game. I'm surprised this t- is still hanging I around I could have taken here. that with the first overall pick, and it was no better or worse than like the, the next uh, seven games. You know why? I Thank just, you for your input. I'm not enjoying... I'm just not enjoying anything about the Bucks this season. Tom I mean, kind of makes me sad, and they're getting healthier. They put yeah. up 31 points. It's Last a strange week they look game, pretty good. but like he threw for I almost 400 yards. For 31 points on Sunday night. Why? Because it was just junk. The game's over. Half their points. Well, then, then, then we can take away the, all of the Lions' points this season. What are you talking about? They I moved, said what I said, and I stand by it. They moved the ball early and often the whole game. That was easily their best performance. Well, they're getting healthier. All right, all right. I, I mean, down. also they. Brady has not lost three games in a row in 20 years. So I think they're under pressure. He's also on the injury report with a finger and a shoulder. I'm not concerned about that at this stage, are you? That's nice nice of you. I'm sure he's concerned. 
It's not. I think it, the idea that Tom Brady is not going to suit up and be ready to go is, is would is, is not happening. How do the Falcons deal with this? Are they? Do they do what they did last week? Where I think they love the way they ran the ball. I don't know if you could do that against Tampa Bay, but uh, it's Kyle Pitts also has been completely invisible for the Falcons. That's another way they could go around this. But I, I found the Falcons have been one of the more interesting teams to watch. And Arthur Smith, one of the better offensive coaches, and, and Mariota is up and down. But I think they'll hang around in this thing. Do you want to hear a great? Um take from Brady you know Brady is obviously as we just said he's been playing in the league for over 20 years he's seen it all and he was asked today uh, this Dave Ely who sends me these nugs from the newsroom it's like, nice of hey this is good for the show this is good for the show and more often than not he's spot on Tom Brady was asked about all the teams sitting at two and two here's what he, uh, Tom had to say I think there's a lot of bad football from what I watch you know <laughs> I watch a lot of bad football a lot of yeah, poor quality of football. That's what I see. That's interesting. Well, I think he's right, though. Well, offenses are struggling. Passing The passing game, which is what he cares about. And he's right. It's like the best part of football, I would say. It's struggling. The, the yards per attempt are down at a level that has not been seen since Tommy was in about his, what, fifth season, 2006. He looks skinny there, huh? He's, he has since the summer. Yeah, those these Wednesday different. press conferences, he, he looks sunken, a little sunken. Hmm. I mean, he's going through some things. We know he that. Is. I it's think like he was, when he was actually little, asked about it today. When you're a little older, but you're also in like great shape and there's not much uh, flab, it, it shows up in a different way than maybe when you were 15 years ago. You that, know what I mean? Look yeah, at that, he looks slight compared to years out, past. Uh, for people that are listening to the audio, if you want to check out the video version of the show, which you can get on YouTube and on the NFL channel uh, with through NFL Plus, is that all right? Yep. Um, <laughs> and on he, the network on Saturday. And of course, on NFL Network. And on Sky Sports on Saturday. But Yeah, so look at him. Look at his shoulders. He just looks, I don't know, maybe it's been a tough, it's been a tough uh, eight months or so for Tom. The Hope Bucks run okay. defense hasn't quite been the same. They got run over last week against uh, That's a Kansas chance City. For, and that's so a I chance. Think this, is, this has been a get-right game for the Buccaneers at, uh, throughout the Brady- uh, time in Tampa. He, they've scored over 30 points against Atlanta every single time they've played. This was actually the game that kick-started their Super Bowl run. I don't know if you remember that. It was like a Saturday game where they put like a 48 on them or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, but this this Falcons team is different. This Mariota is different. I know he only completed seven passes, but I'm enjoying the experience. I think he's more explosive. I don't think it's just the, that he's wearing the number one in these black jerseys. He looks like a more explosive athlete. He looks back there like a really dynamic runner. He's not a great thrower all the time, but he's a dynamic runner. Uh, they have some issues with injuries. Cordero Patterson, as we know, he's been moved to injured reserve, but they had some guys that stepped up this past Sunday, and um, we'll Algier see. Algier and Huntley. Yeah. Algier they look looked fantastic. They like, looked this- amazing. They're giving me Titans vibes. Titans that come off the bus, and they're like, we're bigger than you. We're stronger than you. We're manly. Uh, that's like what the Titans want to be. And that's a little bit what the Falcons and are turning into. where was Arthur Smith before but bingo. the Atlanta Falcons? Big, strong-looking team. The teams. offensive coordinator of the Tennessee Titans. Where he Titans. benched Mariota, but we don't need to explore that right now. Well, that's a, di- a, that's a different Mariota. Everything's changing. I, he looks different. It's almost like He's Mariota. almost like the way that Ryan Tannehill became a well, different Tannehill. it's like sometimes you take what you can get. If Ryan Tannehill was available for Marcus Mariota's price, it just didn't, they, then they would do that. But you, you take what, what you can get. What if Mariota some somehow, too. through some type of voodoo curse, is sucking the muscle mass and power from Tom Brady? And you're actually seeing it manifest in how they physically wow. look. Yeah, because like hmm. his – Just a, a thought. It's explosive. Explosive movements. Uh, but uh, Patterson is out, uh, but we'll see if the young guys could still play the guitar for another week. And also Kyle Pitts, uh, who again was – he had like a 25-yard catch, first play from scrimmage, and then didn't have another I wish reception. I drafted this. And I think he also uh, has an ankle issue. So we'll see if he's going to be on the field, but they have moved the ball without him for the most part this, this year. Is this for first so. place? I, I made a mistake. Do, well, you can do a trade. Great. Okay. Uh, Marcus, chance. Whenever you get a chance uh, to offer, trade with Greg, you can if really you, you can concoct an offer. But right. I, I like remember, this game remember too. Remember me just like raking them over the coals last year and get I got multiple firsts out of it. I thought you did an excellent job with that trade. You want to make an offer? We're going to take I, a break. I, I'm not. I want to, He's going to, have to make an offer to me. I want to keep this game. So you make one to me. That's a, that's a nice play. Yeah. We're going to take a break, and when we get back, there's going to be a trade offer. Okay. From Greg to Mark, and let's see what happens. 
All right, we're back. Greg, you've spent the last 25 minutes pondering <laughs> what, what you got. you're going to do. Here is the offer. You really are into this sneaky into the Falcons Bucks. I know. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. I always tilt. have the Bucks live. Um, all right, how about if I give you the team of ATL, Lions, Patriots, and. A first. Um, what do you mean a first? Future first. I'll, I'll bring in um, the food item of your request. So well, I mean, he doesn't <laughs> like food, and it's free food it's, here. Oh, we have free, That's excellent free food Greg. here. That was a, you spent 25 minutes coming up with that? <laughs> I, it was not 25 minutes. It was five seconds. And Oh, that how is. About, how about we give, if Aaron Rodgers heard that, he'd be questioning you. Let's give him another chance down the road to think this again, but I'm you saying no to that. A, you got to offer no to a that. future draft pick, I got to say. Okay. I'll give you a, yeah, future considerations. Come back to me later. I've hey, hung, up the, hung up the phone right now. Fuck you, Greg. <laughs> oh, no, new guy. Why? What is, why would that be? <laughs> All right, I am up, and it is Slim Pickens here. So let's go. Uh, the Tennessee Titans uh, traveling to Landover. Let's see, a lot of people don't know. Landover, not Washington. <laughs> to face the Commanders. Don't really, not really excited to watch the Commanders in real time. They don't do it for me. I have them down at 29 now in the power rankings. They uh, really did not... Um, feel like an organization that was competitive against the Cowboys and Cooper Rush. And I know everybody's hot in the pants about Cooper Rush right now, but, you know, when Cooper Rush is throwing bombs downfield with the game already in hand, you're just being disrespected at that point. And Washington <laughs> is just not getting a lot of respect right now at one and three last place in the NFC East. So you have that situation. The pass protection is poor for Carson Wentz. He never seems comfortable. He's – everything is hard for the commanders on offense. He's always throwing into tight windows. You don't want – Carson Wentz thrown into tight windows. Uh, so now you have a situation where the Titans are coming off a win, um, coming off two wins, in fact, to get back to solid ground. They let the Colts back into that game after jumping out ahead, but they did a good job calming things down, closing that game out. In general, this feels like a great spot for the Titans, who are who got out to an 0-2 start last year, to really kind of feel good about themselves by beating up on a lesser commander's team. That's what I see. I know they didn't do anything in Gravedigger um, in the second half before they were able to close that game out late. They did nothing. At one point, midway through the fourth quarter, I think they had 10 total yards of offense in the second half. So you want to see some consistency, but Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry looks great. The commanders are not good, and that's why. Justin Graver. Ooh, is he going to do gonna it? Lock up the Tennessee Titans to mm. win their third consecutive game, beating up on Joe Theismann's Pentagon men. <laughs> this is exactly the type of game the Titans always come out super flat in and lose. So I'm <laughs> terrified of what's going to happen. But yeah, but you've been saying that every week about I know. the Titans. You keep uh, picking against them and have paper, all this naysayer talk. I know. I, I'm annoyed. Why did I not lock them up? They did deliver for the Rainmaker. Yes. Um, on paper, the Titans should dominate this game, but we'll see who can step up in the receiving core. I love how your mind is just a total torture trap at all times, yes, Greg, on this episode particu in particular. Burks Go ahead. Dealing sorry, with Justin. a turf toe issue. No, and wait, so start over. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I, like, I hurt you there. I'm Titans sorry. Titans uh, receivers, who knows who's going to be the playmaker because Traylon Burks dealing with a turf toe issue. So Kyle Phillips still has like a shoulder thing. Maybe he'll be back and healthy for this game. Maybe Josh Gordon gets elevated from the practice squad. What is he, like 38 years old at this point? I'm not talking about Josh Gordon. I know. So that's where the Titans offense is I did is not at. like the yeah, look of that. Yeah, but they have Woods. They have, yeah. I didn't like the look of that Burks injury either. And I know. it's turf toe, and that's something that can stick with like you. He was literally like hopping down the field instead good. of running a route. That I, was a bizarre I feel play. like they're coming. The, the Titans are coming. And they get a little better every week. And, and a little Henry, healthier on defense Henry looks every week. great to yep, me. He looked right. I don't think they're there, and they might not. I don't know if they'll get there, but the reason they keep having these falloffs is the offensive line consistency is just not there. For the most part, they're losing battles, and they have like a couple drives where they get over it. But that, it's hard to be a good team where, for long stretches, their offensive line is not good. Like well, they're hoping to be average, and I don't think they're average yet. Dennis Daly, who the Titans traded for, like in the last moments before the season started is now the starting left tackle because Taylor Lewan right. tore his ACL again and is out for the year. Nicholas Petit Frere, a third round rookie, is starting at right tackle. Aaron Brewer and not playing well. Not, he was the one yeah. who got They're run blocking well, but their pass protection is abysmal. Yeah. 
How about Stonehouse? You, you've been keeping an eye on Stonehouse? We got a situation here in the punter. Uh, Developing news. The punter punch bowl mixer. What is it? You know, the kicker no, club gets a lot of love. Right. Nobody was because it's at a local gymnasium. Uh, it's not. It, there's no velvet ropes. Do you know how gym. angry it is? How angry Bill Belichick is right now that the Titans found some undrafted rookie named Stonehouse with long flowing locks who is just booming week after week. This guy's a weapon. Stonehouse. I I like. <laughs> listen, that we know we can trust. What's his name? Ricky Ryan. Ryan Stonehouse Ryan? Okay. became the first punter in NFL history to have an average punt distance of 55 or more yards in gonna, three yeah. straight games. Okay. That, I'm not crazy. It felt like one of the best punting performances I've ever seen in my life a week ago. Did you bring up incredible. Nico Autry? I did not bring He's up Nico. Autry. He's been really, He's good, been really and good. Him and Jeffrey Sims. So you lose Harold Landry. You lost your left tackle. But this is a well coached team that they're not. I don't think they're a powerhouse. But I think they're going to be okay, and they're going to win nine or ten games, and this will be one and of those division. wins. Not to bury Mike. They so could. Not, not to bury Ron Rivera, but he kind of made a comment this week. You know, hey, we need a little time. You know, it's like talking about time. You know, this is what we've got right now. And I kind of look over on the other sideline. I'm like, Mike Rabel didn't need any time. Mm-hmm. He's he kind of looked like a Mike Rabel team each and every year he's been there. Rivera hinted at maybe big changes coming, and it made me think of potentially Carson Wentz at some point taking a seat. I could see it. Who's? Oh, it's. Uh, Heineke, As we all know, you got a rookie to really there too. Go ahead and, I don't uh, need start to, to take command. Heineke again, though, right? Oh no, I think we will see it's um, Sam Howell. Sam, Sam Howell. Sam Howell is a little something. Sam Howell is like a pretty great player in the preseason. I'm just saying, like if Wentz just continues to downslide. Uh, and on the Titans, hey, Austin Hooper, make a play. It's been a while. It's that's what like we said years. in Cleveland too. Yeah, that's yeah. about three years. It's not gonna happen. Somebody's gonna step up and make some plays if. Uh, Burks is out. All right, let's move on. I got to grab a late game here. So Zeuser's going to grab Niners at Panthers and uh, whatever. It is what it is. See uh, Baker Mayfield fire a ton of passes into the offensive line, uh, into the defensive line, and then uh, we'll see if the Niners can build off, uh, which was, I thought, a statement game on Monday night against the Rams where they said, uh, hey, this is us. Like the guys that at the end of last season and we were making a run into the playoffs and then nearly got to the Super Bowl. Like we're still those guys. This is that team. And we don't need Jimmy G to be a stud. We just need him to get the ball into the hands of our guys and they will do the rest. Uh, Debo Samuel at the top of that list. I actually had a, a little bit of like a hesitation in fantasy land, for instance, with Debo. Is like, could he put that year back together again you know, two years in a row, he's still doing that thing. So even even though Brandon Ayuk has not really had a big uh, game yet and hasn't jumped out, and George Kittle has been mysteriously uh, silent so far this year, Samuel's still taking over games, and Garoppolo with each passing week I think is going to get more comfortable, and I think the Niners are going to be all right with that defense – they're going to win 12 games. I mean, it makes you it makes Ooh. you just think of last year when they were peaking. Like, the defense is so dominant. And if you get the yards after the catch from Samuel, this is a, a, an environment that Jimmy G can thrive in. I, 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 the thing is always with Jimmy G and the turnovers. And if he can keep it clean the way he did against the Rams, you're fine. He's a beast, Samuel. I mean, he's just – you cannot bring him down uh, with one man, and, and, and that's such a, a weapon. I would like to see, Greg, what is up with George Kittle? Why? Because this offense can be better – but it's really, you know, do you put that on the quarterback play or is there something else going on? Is Kittle physically right? I don't know. You do wonder the position that he plays and the style of play that he's had and the amount of different injuries. I think it's probably fair to assume he's not as explosive an athlete as he was five years ago. And and maybe that's mm. that's a big part of it. It's sad. Yeah. And uh, with the as far as the Panthers go, I'd like to see Christian McCaffrey being used. Like we talk about you talk about it, Greggy. Um, and it's an argument that sets up well for you that, oh, but Teddy Bridgewater in the offense was good. Uh, but, uh, you know, but it sucked with uh, Darnold, and now it sucks with Mayfield, but Teddy's good. Like, that version of Christian McCaffrey, I'm not saying he's a lesser player now, but they used him in a different way back with Teddy. Uh, he was running Wasn't routes. Wasn't he hurt that whole year? Uh, Teddy, he was... Am I crazy? I don't think so. I think that was the Teddy monster year, wasn't it? I mean, if if we're going to talk about George Kittle as his body not being the same, McCaffrey's missed half his career. Uh, I think the McCaffrey have been looks different. okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they did not uh, coincide. McCaffrey missed, missed the Teddy. Well, then that blows up my point. Teddy is just a stud. 
<laughs> I stand down. Everything He's I was about to stud. say. They were just like an average offense. But I would like point. to see. My point is more like this McCaffrey just like run between the tackles and take a screen every once in a while. I'm not sure this is he's being used in the way to maximize what he can give to the team. Uh, and it just feels like this is going to be potentially ugly. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Justin. I agree. This could be potentially ugly. The Niners have a few things working against them. A short week, long distance, early kickoff, but they are just so much better than the Panthers. And I feel like this defensive line is going to overwhelm Baker Mayfield all day. So I am locking up the Niners. Okay. Under the... Six and a half, all right. Yeah, this is my first, like, borderline No, that's mir- that's a good test. lock, though. That was a tough week for You're feeling good too. about it. Good work. You got to be feeling good about it. I, I feel okay about it. I feel great about it. The, the switch over, but that kickoff, wouldn't be right. The early long road trip uh, on a short week is, like, a little, gives me a little mm. hesitancy, but it's such a How about a the fact spread. that they're the worst offense in the league against the best defense yeah. in the league? Right, well, you're playing what, an awful that team. Seems, that's what, that's what that led seems me to like a strong up. thing. Kyle Shanahan said going into this game the Panthers could be 4-0. What are you talking about? They have they have the worst yards per play by gamesmanship, my boy. Just coach speak <laughs> by far. Nick Bosa, by the way, leads the NFL in pressures by eight. School player. So uh, maybe I got to take Crosby out of all team first. But there's a lot of good uh, uh, good pass do, rushes. So maybe it's Bosa, Bosa, you, Parsons, Crosby. Now you're you're on the Geno Smith train uh, in the NFC West, but I have an NFC West dog as well. You know who that is, right? His name is Hufanga. Okay. <laughs> How about Ufanga ending that game on Monday night? Yeah. I mean, Ufanga. He's, he's your all-pro safety right he's now. He's my guy. He's my dude. Now, you need a guy, Marky. <laughs> I will. I will. West. <laughs> Mark, Mark seems annoyed that you have a guy, that you Sorry, have this dude. guy. Sorry, it's also it. not no. an early game, by the way, <laughs> Justin. It's it's in the afternoon. Oh, good point. <laughs> it is on the East Coast. Uh, but it's, All right, it's what do we have? We got. What do we need? What do we have? <laughs> not a lot. Last pick? I, I'm not that annoyed by it. Uh, we've got two games left. <laughs> All right. Who's up, Mark? It's me. And I'm going to take, right. I'll take Houston at Jacksonville. All right. You know how Jacksonville owns the Colts? Oh, yeah. Houston has won nine straight against Jacksonville. I, I, w- I think that would be a That's disaster crazy. for the Jaguars to lose this thing. I mean, la- for me, Trevor Lawrence, what happened in the rain, the four fumbles, a number of them were Kiss on him. The rain. Not seeing pressure. One of them just slipped out of his hands. But you can also throw a terrible pick that he that threw in that game. The whole thing was a toughie. It was a bad situation. <laughs> but I expect him to bounce back. And I, I, for me, the reason I'm watching this is really just because of his development. And uh, I think this is a situation where you've got to go in and basically at home in Jacksonville dominate a Texans team that's not as bad as some people. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I'm a little bit um, exhausted by like everyone needs to decide whether Trevor Lawrence is great or not every single week. Like well, he's either a bust just, or oh, this is the big step. Like I just can we just let who's the guy that? develop? Just, I, it's fine just, just to let wa- him develop. Just watch a game with him. That's all. No, I'm yeah. just saying there's right. a lot of. I'm not saying you, Mark. I'm saying there's a lot of talk out there after each week that he's oh, this is it. He's on his own. He's on his way. He's the guy everybody thought. Then he has a bad game. It's like ooh, ooh maybe he's not a generational quarterback. <laughs> Last year, can we understand this was a unique circumstance? Last year was an atomic poop show, and let's give him some runway and see where he's at in. November. Yeah, I think this is a great test. Not not necessarily for him, but for the Jaguars and where they are. They're seven point favorites here. This game is not lockable. I mean, the 49ers are lockable, and this game's not lockable. The Jaguars are a favorite in a game that's unlockable. I mean, and how about I, that? I'm not that comfortable with that. I would not lock Nor them, am I. especially when they've lost eight straight against the Texans. So to me, this is a, a game for the the Jaguars to show. We are really good up front on both sides. We're going to grind this Texans team down. Maybe it'll be challenging for a while. It's a division team that does know us, uh, but they should. They are the more talented team. The Texans are 428-1 against the rest of the NFL, while they're 4-0 against uh, the Jaguars the last two years. <laughs> so <Sorry. weird>. <laughs> Texans stink. <sighs> hey, I thought they should have learned something from last week, though. The, Lovey Smith is so concerned, Pepe Hamilton too, about like, hey, we're going to run go coming off the bus. Like, that's who we are as a team. We're going to run on first down. We're going to run on second down. And I get it. Damian Pierce is great. But Davis Mills had by far the best two and a half, three quarters of his season. Looked pretty good when they were just in, eh, we got to throw it every down mode. Like, uh, 
throw on first and second down. That's how you get a good running game because those are the better downs to throw the ball. Like almost everyone else in the NFL has gotten to this point. Too many, but the too Texans many drops. Have not. Too many drops by the Texans receivers. Damian Pierce had the big touchdown run, so that hopefully can get him unlocked and and went over 100 yards total offense there. But yeah, I just don't see them winning too many games this year. They're asking a lot of Stingley, asking him to cover one on one. That. Derek Stingley, the, the opposing, and he, I think he looks pretty good for the most part, but that's the right. hard ass. There's a lot of open guys for that Jaguars team. Greg, the great. last pick of the draft goes to you, and this has become almost a tradition on the show. <laughs> uh, the Chicago Bears just are not tickling our fancy right now. For a right? reason. You know, and the Vikings aren't totally, not that they deserve to be drafted last, but this there's not a different uh, Vikings team this year. It's kind of the same team. Yeah, they, I see that. They are, it's unsettling that they might be 4-1. and one. Uh, Like, the, these two teams combined shouldn't be 5-3 and three combined. I don't know. <laughs> I think we got to have a conversation about Justin Fields Uh-oh. with um, with Phil at some point. Phil Wesseling, the number one Justin Fields fan. Oh, he saw and him as uh, Jordan-esque. Uh, basketball's not the same because as football, but... Because right now, it's, it's a tough situation. Football is completely different than basketball. There, everyone's still true. there's a lot of the fields uh, cognoscenti who still want to put it all on what's going on around him. But there are some pretty unique things that he does in terms of holding the ball so long and not taking the easier throws early in the down that that you can put on him. His time to throw is higher than anyone else. He is converting pressure into sacks at a rate that's outrageous. I think he, if you combined uh, his, he has 34 completions combined this year, and he has 33 sacks plus scrambles this year. So it's just like yeah. a weird combo. And like, remember everyone just blamed everything on Matt Nagy? Oh yeah, we talked about this recently. Okay. Well, so I mean, well, I, they well wished, I was just saying about I how wish the, yeah. I had a Matt Nagy passing game to watch right now because right. that was a lot better than what's going on I mean, right to now. your point, he had 174 yards last week. That was his best output of the year. That had was the two hun- great throws, but also had some very concerning moments. It was the 106th too. most output of any quarterback all season and eight less than he had a year ago. So there is like statistically a regression, but I see it also just from the eye. This player is just not growing. Matt Eberflus is in a tough situation here because Fields still represents a future or the preferred future of the Bears as an organization, but he's not able to lead the offense with any level of efficiency but you're tied to him. So it's like, does Zebra Flus, you know, what does he do? Does he even have the power institutionally to make a move if he feels like Fields is just not the guy well, what's either the right point? now or ever? And like Why loop- do you have to stick with him, though? I don't think they are. They're a, new, they're a completely new regime, and they have an absolute mountain of cap space next year. I'm just saying a lot can happen in the offseason where you don't have to stick with Justin Fields. You're right about this the, is regime. What the rest I think you kind of do for a while because Simeon's the next guy, and I think you can question, like, is Luke Getze the guy? Because it's also a first-time head coach. I'm saying, Greg, first-time like, offensive him. coordinator from a picked-over coaching tree at some some point, like not everyone from this coaching tree gets he's from Green Bay. Uh, keeping, it's going like to work. Saying keeping him next season. I'm not saying right. you dump him for Simeon now, but like team building wise, do you have to go into this next year with this quarterback necessarily if this is who no, he is? No, it's early to have that conversation, but no. I mean, and you don't even have to well, stick that's him for your opinion <laughs> for the whole season. There is the week five preview again, Colts Broncos recap Friday fun show. Uh, by the way, let's check in on the uh, we're at the quarter ish poll. Let's check in on the uh, the lock standings. I think I'm going to like what I'm going to see here. Oh, some things never change. The Zeus are three and one on top. Greggy, Sessi, Gravy, and the West Bros all at two and two. So just like the NFL, two and two is everywhere. How Not- do they decide the order of the two and twos? What are you thinking you should be second over Greg? Not necessarily. I just like to understand how right, they well, decided that. Drew. Christensen and uh, Justin Gray. Does Drew have a mic? Does it, we never get to They've listed as Greg, like Mark, Gravedigger, Wes. Uh, I brothers. I did not send them in this order, so this was reordered because well, that's Drew, even more suspicious. Did, Drew you said hear specifically what Drew just said to me? Yeah. he likes Greg more. Yeah. That's what he said. He said he likes Greg more. <laughs> he literally well, said Well, that's that. an answer. So that is going to be an issue. Drew, I tried to you're put myself last re- humbly, but that didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. So, Drew, you're probably going to regret that. tough because we're allowed to take favorites. So if you just picked like favorites, you should probably go with like a two-thirds clip. Do you agree that and Drew is going to live to regret that statement? Drew doesn't seem like a man with a lot of regrets, but he'll definitely feel the pushback. He's kind of a he'll- zaddy in a bear cave, Christensen. 
I think he'll. Everybody I think he'll live. Huddle up! I'll take care. I of you. think he'll know it's good for the show, content wise, right. and that's what I he think. Really that's cares exactly about. what he was doing. Right. Right. All right. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> thank you to everybody for listening. Mark is spitting out right now. No, I'm, I. I just. I have only begun the investigation, and don't we ask will see where it goes. Scary questions if you don't want scary answers. Um, we will be back Friday, as I said. This is a Sunday. Watergate level disaster. <laughs> and we'll be back with a recap of all these games. Thank you, to everybody. And again, yes, NFL Network. Every Saturday, you could check out this program in Technicolor. Uh, on your basic cable package of choice. Maybe it's a premium tier. I don't know how it works. Uh, But if you have NFL Network, check us out. Until then, eat the call.